while I pick up the sheets with the names on it. Our first guest, let's welcome Yvonne of the Tranquil Living, of Tranquil Blessings Family Holistic Health. Let's welcome her to the stage, everybody. Yes, yes. Such a pleasure to have you here, sister. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, wherever you, yeah. Our next guest, do we have Mr. Keith Tariq Cunningham in the house, everyone? Let's get this brother, everyone. Yes, sir. All right. Brother Tariq here is founder of Keep It Real, where real is due, LLC. And he does community work. He's been doing, for, he's been doing so for a decade and more. So uh, we're going to hear a lot of good things this brother's going to say tonight. Our third panelist is Ms. Tierra Garnett. Tierra Garnett, please come to the stage. All right. That's cool. Our next panelist is Reverend Ronald Wilson, Jr. He is the Associate Minister of Allen Chapel AME Church, everyone. <laughs> yes. Rev Man, wow. Good to see you. Very great to see you. Okay. So now we have a pretty cool panel here. Um, we're on the radio right now. I'm really, really contemplating asking a sister to come up from the audience. It's something in me. Mm. Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's make it even. You know, I'm gonna open the floor for any sister to come up who wants to feel so. No pressure at all. All right, come on, let's go now. You want to? Come on. Let's make it. Naima Powell, everyone. Naima Powell, she has a film out right now. The film is called Through the Eyes of the Children. Yes, that's what it's called. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, I'm going to ask you to sit on the edge here. So so we're just going to, because I think yeah, it's a good way to just maintain. And uh, if you can just hold that mic. So. All right. Thank y'all. Very appreciative uh, of this panel coming together. It came together pretty last minute, just to tell you behind the scenes. Um, yeah, definitely as you see right now, but you know, anyway, it's just it's just good to have people, like I said, talking about issues that are relevant. So to pop it off, I'm going to ask y'all, okay, if you guys, in your position, in your position, Just to find um, what's the definition of a stable male-female relationship, you know. Uh, give a, a two, three-sentence definition if you can, you know, just for the audience. Reflect on it for a little bit and uh, let us know what you think. Well, let's let sister go first and we'll go sister. Well, yeah. um, I think definition of a phenomenally healthy relationship involves number one honesty there's no facades no illusions there's trusted honesty between two people and from the beginning they are comfortable knowing that they can be their true selves with one another, and that's exactly what they're doing. Day in, day out, it's no hiding, it's no say this, but can't say that. Um, I think that that is one of the biggest parts of a definition of a healthy relationship, is that trusted honesty. And is this, um I'm assuming you're talking about if you like intimate relationships, but what about platonic? If you I'm talking about it all. At all? Okay. It has to be. You, as far as I'm concerned, even uh, any sort of supposed friendship, if you're not able to be your true self and trust that it's okay to be your true self, what what is that? That's not a friendship. Yeah. That's not and any type of ship. That's yeah. some kind of acquaintance, something fake. It's not real. So. Keith, what do you think, sir? Yeah. 
I think of uh, effective communication because um, without proper communication, you're not going to be able to get, you know, what she stated, you know, get the trust and respect. But even before that, I think it's going to start with love of self first because I find that a lot of us, you know, especially with the individuals that I would deal with, they don't understand a serious or true definition of what love is. So you have to start with self first. You have to have love for yourself before you can love somebody else. Because growing up, a lot of us take the word, for example, promise. That's a word I don't like. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, you, you, you come to find that behind using the word promise, things materialize with it. A simple thing you can tell a little three-year-old, four-year-old, do right, I'm going to take you to McDonald's. Growing up, you start to learn that when that word promise is used, you know, things materialize behind it. But don't nobody say they love you right. and have a genuine feeling for it. So by the time we get to our teenage years, what I tell a lot of my parents is, if you got a 13, 14-year-old daughter and she's never heard anybody say that they genuinely love her, the first little dude that come along saying she look cute and ready to take her to the local curry out and get her that full steak and cheese with everything on it and that large fry and that mixed iced tea lemonade, she thinks she done rocked the world. Mm. So oh. you got to start with loving yourself and have commu effective communication. Perfect. Naima. Um, I would say um, being uh, able to be vulnerable and uh, – and allow someone to hold your heart. Um, so in a relationship, you have to say that this person that I'm with, I can give them my heart. And um, to, to really have a strong um, connection, that to me, uh, like subside, uh, dealing with everything that might happen, if you understand that that person is truly connected to your heart and, and the same thing, vice versa in a way, uh, and, and you know that when they hold it, they're going to protect it, then you can really uh, be free within uh, that relationship. So that reminded me, because I went to see a documentary about Ruby Dee and Arthur Davis. That was a really good documentary. I loved it. Yeah. It was a great documentary. And um, so basically she was talking about um, their relationship, and she said that um, she just loved him. So it didn't matter what anybody said about him anything he had her heart and vice versa so even though you know sometimes you get tested you have to have that willingness to uh, say can I really love that person again fully so you have to be honest with you like with honesty and everything like you have to do all that so um, that's to me that's the key gotcha. well uh, I would say one of the keys is to respect to have respect within the relationship before you can even trust somebody, before you can even uh, share that connection, there has to be a sense of respect within the relationship. And so it, even before you open up your heart, you have to know that that person will take care of your heart by respecting your wishes and you respecting theirs. So I would say a key, uh, a key component of any relationship is respect. Okay. It's a very good start to the uh, forum. Uh, so we so we hear respect, vulnerability, uh, trust, and forgiveness from what I heard. Uh, just being when you're hurt, taking that person back pretty much. You know, it, it's very hard to build this, you know, foundation. And, you know, we look no further than today's music. And that's to criticize it. Not going to be critical at all. But just to say for a fact, for better or worse, it reflects, you know, what you see in society. So, you know, if we do want to change the tide and, you know, make our society better, where would you start? Um, and where do we start with this? Who wants to take this question? Like, where's the first place that you would start in fixing male-female relationships right now? Um, I think we have to start with our families and our children, um, what definitions we have for healthy relationships as parents and what we're modeling to our children. 
what we're showing them, what we're talking about with them regularly, I think that's where it starts within our family because as far as I'm concerned, that's the quietest revolution. That's really the revolution that's never televised is what's happening in your household every day, like what you're talking about. Even if as a single parent um, raising children, I still have to talk with my children about relationships, mm -hmm. healthy relationships. What, what do they look like? What are those conversations like, you know, uh, if you don't mind me asking? You know. Those conversations have to be transparent. Mm -hmm. They have to be um, trusted vulnerability because as far as I'm concerned, I have two girls. So when I'm talking with my girls about relationships, um, I've already seen what happens uh, when you get – you should do this, you should do that, you should do this, you should do that. I grew under, I grew up under that. I've seen what happens when I am not, as far as I'm concerned, getting transparency from the parents. Hasn't worked out for me. So what I'm seeing that's working within my family unit and others who are doing more partnership parenting instead of authoritarian and being comfortable with transparency what I'm seeing is working is being able to be honest and yeah, have honest yeah. conversations with your children about what you've experienced and what you're ex currently experiencing I'm still a single mom I'm still a single woman so that means that I still deal with different types of relationships because I am a single woman I'm not in a relationship right now right so I think it starts within your family with your children and you know, what type of honesty you know what what does that what does that do because honesty pretty much sometimes you know it it can be you know the you know a truth that people really don't want to look at it's pretty inconvenient you know like can families unite around those truths who wants to take that um, um can i say something about what she said and then sure, okay sure. okay so Basically, um, another thing I was thinking about, because I used to teach as well, and um, the kids were coming to me asking some interesting questions. I'm like, whoa, no, I didn't, you know, I mean, I didn't expect it about um, what relationships are and, you know, what they should be doing right now. And um, I say one thing that you can give to a child is self-worth. And uh, we teach them what they are and what they mean to them to themselves then um, they would tr start to create better behaviors when it's time to find someone to be with and then I would say um, the other question you said about trust what can you please repeat that so comment? just yeah. uniting around those those unfortunate truths you know you know um, can there be transparency if you're talking about transparency you're talking about love and giving some people's you know, their, their situation, you know, there are things in life, like not tragedies, of course, but like just bad things, you know, can you, if the truth is something that's unfortunate, can you, can you still make love out of that? Can you unite um, that? You can. In reality, because um, you go through life, you're going to have um, hard times, and when they understand that that comes about, then you, you teach them that, you know, you can always build, be built up again from that. And in order to do that, you have to be uh, willing to, to expose yourself. Like, and I, I, I speak on my family because I don't mind it. It's about talking about those unspoken truths. Because when you see shakiness within uh, relationships in your home, as a child, like, you, I don't, in my document, you see, you feel everything. So, um, and then you see that as an adult still going on and people are not being willing to speak about it, it just creates this shame on um, how, we com uh, how to communicate with somebody. Because if you're too afraid to expose your, their, your truth, mm -hmm. then you say, I can't expose my truth because I'm gonna be hurt. Right. Or nobody's gonna wanna be around me. Right. So you have to say, okay, um, you know, there's, there's hurt in this world, but you have to learn how to live through it. 
Tariq, how have you been able to uh, get the truth out of kids and get them on that road? With, 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 with regards to relationships? Relationships, uh, just relationships, yes, yes. Um, I mean, I start by basically, I mean, again, it, it falls, we, my biggest thing and how I approach everything when I work with somebody is getting over the brokenness, basically. I mean, because, again, if you don't love yourself, you're not gonna. You're not allowed to even love anybody else, and and love is a verb. You know, it, I mean, I tell people all the time. That's why I don't use it lightly. You know, that's why I don't. I despise the word promise because promise is is, is a phantom word to me, as far as I'm concerned. It's like a ghost. I don't know when it's coming, but something always materializes, and it's like a ghost. You never know when it's going to materialize. Right. But again, dealing with a lot of youth that I deal with, it's like. I mean, and it not even just the youth, but the parents. You know, if you if you have a broken child, nine times out of ten, it came from a broken parent and a broken household. So I can't fix the child that's broken without trying to fix the parent. You know, case in point, if I if I don't if I don't never make a home visit to see what is going on inside that home, I gotta extend my services beyond just that child. So before we can help, you know, us as an individual, we, we got to we, we gotta look at the, the, the wider picture of it. And a lot of people, they just, they're not looking at that. You know, and that's, that's, I think that's what's messing up the relationships because everybody's so in tune to what's going to materialize out of that relationship. Right. So, you know, how do you do that? How do you teach a, a, a young person patience and, you know, and, and you know, uh, at that age, you know, there's a lot going on. Of course, you're developing pretty rapidly. You know, you think you 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 sort of equate 15 years of life with like living to like age 40 already, like you're already old. You know, how how you help a young person understand that like relationships can't be micro they can't be microwaves. They got to be you know, you know how you know how do you translate that you know in your work? And Ron, I want you to touch on this after, uh, but you know, I know you work closely with the youth. You know, when, when they're talking, you know, please let us, you know, if you can. Um, I think one of the basic things that I try to do is uh, I keep, I'm, 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 I'm a realist, so I believe in keeping everything simplistic. Mm -hmm. You know, everything nowadays is, like, instantaneous. So I'm, I'm from the school of hard knocks where when the microwave came out, it went up to the 16 number. That was it. You know, when you dialed the number on the phone, you had to rotate the number. Yeah. And when you messed up, you had to start over again. Mm -hmm. And the TV went off at 12 o'clock. But now with everything being so instantaneous, it's like the kids, you know, like you said, they 15, but it's like they 45. Yeah. Because everything is so quick and so fast. But what I try to do is I try to break them back from that, that, that mindset of the, everything got to be so quick and so fast. Because, again, when you're looking to get into a relationship, you know, you got a lot of these young brothers out here that feel like, okay, well, if I ain't got this nice car, if I ain't got, you know, these clothes and I can't take it to this club, she ain't going to mess with me. Yeah. But what I tell them is that, okay, if you feel that way then, why is it that if you see a nice-looking female that's giving you your food from a fast food window or working at some little – you know, five and dime store, you quick to want to talk to her and give her an opportunity. But you won't give your chance an opportunity to do better for yourself to get that proper type of female. So sometimes you got to break it down to where, you know, they got to understand that it's, it's not it's not about yeah, you broke what you it down get. on you Yeah, you broke it down quite deeply for them. Like, you know, a lot of kids don't really – they don't understand that there's more to love than just what's on the surface exactly. pretty much. Exactly. You know, I want to give the mic to Ron because he's going to uh, talk about it, I guess, more on a uh, more on a spiritual level. You know, if you know what, are, you know, what are your thoughts as to that? Like in your experience, you know, and talking to friends and whatever else, you know, how have you been able to uh, navigate those conversations? You know, what are, what are they talking about? You know. Uh, the best way that I, I could talk to anybody is to be the example. 
I mean, I can't talk about nobody else, but I can tell you what I've done. And so a lot of times I, I, I find that people will talk about, okay, they did this, they got it that way. But if you break it down and say, look, I didn't get here through this relationship because I talked to somebody else, but I went through the pains of it. You know, I relied on God to maybe show me, okay, is she really the one? Or, you know, this generation, or, or I would say my generation as well, I mean, I'm, I'm young, so we don't like to go through the process of anything. And so when it comes to love, when it comes to relationships, friendships, like you said, we like to hit the start button on the microwave and it be done instantaneously. Right. We don't like for it to actually go in the oven and cook, get to the top oven and, and roast off. We don't like that. And so when I, when I talk to my friends, I, I got to tell them, look, I know he or she may be fine, but they got issues because I got them. Mm -hmm. So some things you got to work through. And if it's going to your knees and praying, look, pray. Ask for discernment to say, look, is this, the, is, is this what I really want? Because any relationship takes time. It's not a microwave. So um, please, by all means. Okay. I want to say the uh, first thing I thought about was needs. Mm -hmm. And um, and, and, and talking to a child about what uh, they really need. And then when you're looking for a relationship, sometimes uh, people just, you know, like they said, a microwave aspect. They look at that, that quick image and they forget about what they really need. And then they get hurt because they're looking at the microwave image. So, and then uh, uh, not only that, is also looking at uh, paying attention to n being numb to what it is that you're right. feeling. Because because of the media that you g have out here, they teach you that you know, if you don't if it's not the way that you it look should look, then you are uh, not doing something right, and, uh, and people then they start to reshape themselves and not and become too num numb to the experience of what it sh should be. So um, those are the two things that came to my mind initially. Uh, I want to let Yvonne um, get the mic real quick and, you know, we talk a lot about the family structure. I want to learn more about, you know, of course, respecting the bounds of, you know, your relationship with your daughters. What are those conversations like if you're talking about, like, you know, not having, you know, just within the realms of, like, building and, you know, going through the hardship of having that, you know. Can, can you recall a time where you sort of had to, like, you know, just – you know, I guess, like, help them, like, think more about, you know, I guess a crush or whatever else they might have had or something like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, it happens often. And uh, essentially, those conversations look like breakdown. They look like, okay, let's start with how you're feeling. Mm -hmm. Let's start with what were your expectations? Mm -hmm. Let's start with, why did you have expectations? Let's start with, okay, now that we've talked about your expectations, why you had them, what happened? What was the result? How did this person take your feelings? Right. How did this person take your actions towards them? What are you expecting them to do for you? Right. What do they want you to do for them? Do the youngins often feel like they can talk to the opposite sex about stuff like that from what you are hearing, you know? From what I hear, um, it seems to be a lot of patriarchy and that's a conversation, that's a topic that um, my girls and I talk about regularly. Mm -hmm. um, the effects of patriarchy on our relationships. Um, why is it that it's okay or it's been made okay for a younger boy to show that he likes a girl by hitting her gotcha. or by talking to his friends while she's within earshot and doing some kind of weird set up right there 
about her right. without her permission, as if she's a possession or property. He like you. Yeah, you need to holler at her. Nah, he like you. Yeah, you need to holler at her. She's right there. Right. What is that? Those are the types of conversations that we're having often. We're talking about how did patriarchy get started? How is it affecting us, our relationships? Also, how is it benefiting guys? It's, and it's, then it how is it also biting them in their butts? It's very true. We, we talk point. about all of that. We have to because this is what's coming up consistently. And as far as I'm concerned, it's a part of my job as a parent, right. you know, with the information that I have to, to dig in, to bring these different topics up so that my girls have an opportunity to get a chance to look at things from perspectives that society is not telling them to look at. They're not hearing these perspectives on TV which we don't watch, you know, streaming TV anyway. They're not hearing this on the radio. Right. Um, they're not seeing it in the videos, in the magazines, because, like I said, quiet revolution. The reality is, particularly for our children and for our community, that's not the intention anyway. Yeah, it permeates so much of our society. And you mentioned patriarchy. Um, yeah, a lot of times, usually, when... You know, it, it it it's so intrusive. It's in every sector of our um, of our society. Um, one of y'all, I just if you can just touch on the experiences you had talking to your males, your young males about you know stuff like that. You know, hitting, um, you know, not hitting the women or how they talk to the women in general. You know, because Miss Yvonne brought up a very good point. You know, not to place blame on them, but patriarchy is ingrained in. American culture and just culture in general. So whoever wants to take that. Um, from a church standpoint, you know, we have guys and everything coming in, coming throughout. And so one thing I would say to them is know who you are and would you want somebody to hit on your mother? Um, if you know who you are, would you want somebody hitting on you? And so understanding that is not about gender, but it's about respecting that human being. Um, once they start to understand that, the valuing of human life, then I believe the turnaround can start to happen because they're not seeing a woman. They're not seeing, a ma they're actually seeing another human being, a soul, a living vessel that is worth something. So I, look, I, I try to teach them, look at it as a human being. They're not just a woman. They're just not just a man. But they're an actual human being that has value. And, you know, human, you know, there are some ancient societies where male-female relationships, speaking to your point, were more complementary. It wasn't more, you know, you didn't have male over female or vice versa. Uh, we, we don't have much time left. I want to give each of the panelists just, uh, just time to answer, you know, one question pretty much. And you can answer this, you know, not on behalf of, like, your gender, but speaking as a black man and speaking as a black woman, like, uh, thinking back in you know recent years, how have you tried to better yourself as you know a member of you know the black male, black female race, you know, so that in essence you're bettering. You know, well, how have you tried to advance? You know, how have you tried to add stability to your life? You know, like in your male female relationship, what have you learned in the last five years as a young male female? Um, I would say for me, uh, because uh, randomly, you know, guys approach us in, uh, as women, we understand, uh, guys approach us in uh, interesting ways. And um, so what I do instead uh, when they are very aggressive and they try to, you know, grab on people, I simply say to them, don't touch me and stuff like that, but I take that opportunity and to sh give them more love. And the way that I do that is just simply say to them, I said, don't you know that you're a king? So when you approach me, know that I'm a queen. So when you act this way towards me, I feel like, you know, 
you're not recognizing the worth that you are. So when, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to bring up a story because uh, this is this young man I spoke to. And um, he's just like, he came up to me and said, yeah, I'm from the trap. I was like, okay, I mean, all right, you from the trap. You're trapping, all right? I know a lot of people who trap. I said, what makes you different? He said, I'm going to be rich one day. And he couldn't tell me um, his worth. And I said to him, uh, you know, um, you know, it, the whole point that I'm making is that, you know, it's just I, I use that opportunity just to say that you're, you're worth more than what you're presenting to me right now. And if you want to talk to me, then you have to present something different. In order to do that, you have to rediscover yourself. In order to do that, you have to be willing to say that this is not worth it. So and it's just really, um, as, a, as women, we have the opportunity. And, and we can give them that opportunity by helping them see, but not being and saying it in a way that dims them, but instead saying it in a way that gives them light and empowers them. And so, you know, that's, that's the power that we have with our voice because they're going to still come. And they're, they're going to keep chasing. So you just have to say, you know, I, I mean, I appreciate your energy. I appreciate um, your, your, your persistence. I really do appreciate who you, you that you're giving to me. But I just want you to know that I just want you to respect me. So I can't give you what you're asking me because you haven't given me that respect. I'm very excited to hear the next perspective. Let's go down the line. Ron, if you can. The last five years, what have you done to advance male-female relationships? I finally got the word out. Dang, there we go. Cool. One word I would use is empower. Um, education is powerful. And when you, like I said, I go back, go, I'm going right back to it. When you understand who you are, then I can empower the next person. I can empower my brother to say, look, you don't have to disrespect her to get her, but you can show her love. But first, do you love yourself enough to love her? And so that those are the type of methods I, I try to use to talk to other people to let them know, love yourself first. Once you love yourself, it's easy to show love to try to get for what you want. But if you can't love yourself, what you're trying to get, you won't show. So that's what I try to do. I don't want to take, but how do you love it? Real, real quickly, how do you love yourself? One word, reflection. Look at yourself. And if you start to introspectively see blemishes or things that you don't like, love is a process. So now it's, trying to, now it's time to change some things so that you can become whole. I like that. Miss Yvonne, please. Um, last five years advancing male-female relationships. Um basically piggybacking off of what um, they have said already. Um, Tranquil Blessings is bringing out a new inspirational tour called Destination Uplift Empowered Transparency. And that is actually um, a culmination of the last 10, 12 years of learning what it takes to create healthy relationships and it does start with empowered transparency recognizing that it's important for me to be honest about the fact that I'm still learning how to love myself and recognizing that I have the power to create whoever it is that's coming into my life and every time I create another one, I have to be honest, I have to reflect, as he said, and I have to look and I have to see, how did I create this person? Why did I create this person? I don't like what I'm seeing. Well, this is my mirror. So if I don't like what I'm seeing, then that means I have more work to do. And um, it's that work. That's the work that I've been doing on myself and as a result, talking about it with my children and other people, that's, as far as I'm concerned, the type of work that I've been doing to advance healthy male-female relationships. Um, 
could I really quick sing this song, a little bit of this song that I wrote that actually, um, it's just really quick. Hey, and it, it, d means, it, it addresses this. The, the people spoke, but make it happen. It's called, it's called, thank you. Like it's called Inside of Me. Um, and it was a breakthrough for me about seven years ago. Okay. Um, didn't overstand for the life of me. Vision was perfect, but I couldn't see. Got my hearing checked to no avail. Still, I chose to stay under the spell. Inside of me, inside, divine, most high in me. All along, immense and strong, it was inside of me. Looked over, under, in between. Never could have imagined it was right inside of me, inside of me. Man, let's give her a hand. <laughs> I heard the raw emotion in that voice, and we got to hear a little bit about what it took to make that song. So we got a two for one treat tonight. Thank you, Yvonne, we appreciate it. Let's give her another hand, y'all. <laughs> Good stuff. Brother Tariq, please close us off, sir. Last five years, advancing male-female relationship. Well, I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, the last five years, the big biggest thing I've done as far as contributing is working more with um, young ladies. A um, Couple years ago, well, a few years ago, probably about five years, probably, I was in um, one of my communities, and um, the young ladies was out one night, and had been about maybe 10 o'clock, and uh, they were saying, uh, Mr. Cunningham, you know, you, you, don't, you don't do nothing with us. And I was like, man, I'm scared of y'all. You know, so they, they was like, you know, it, it had to been maybe about nine of them, you know, but they was like, you know, you, you take the guys here, and you do this, and you do that, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I do that, but um, man, I'm, I'm terrified of y'all females, you know? And um, I think in me having that conversation that night, it sort of opened my eyes up that they saw something in me that was so profound that they wanted to be near that. So it made me look more closely at my daughters because what I try to do is, even when I'm talking to my young men, I let them know you know, and, and with all my fathers, really, because I'm a father facilitator also, but I try to let it be known to them, you have to date your daughter. You know, don't don't not date your daughter, because if you don't date your daughter, and you're going to let another dude come into her life and be her first date, you're going to lose the battle. You know, so, I mean, I, I, I tell my fathers all the time, man, I mean, that that's going to be her first love. You know, and I got my daughter, she's six, and Nobody's gonna be able to say nothing to her, nothing negative about me. You see what I'm saying? I mean, when we go out, I let it be known. Look, it's gonna be just me and you. I want you to get your your, your, your little pretty bows and put your little dress on. And she she thinks she's the top of the world, you know. But when we go to the restaurant, I let her pick the restaurant. I pull out the chair for her, you know. I let her pick what she wants to eat, you know. I, I'm doing all those things. And that's what I tell my fathers that they have to do. And that's been one of my biggest pieces, you know, with working that's with my fathers is letting them know you have to date your daughter. Because if, 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 if you don't give her that respect and be able to tell her she's beautiful, she's pretty, she looks nice without any sexual gain behind it, you see what I'm saying? With no sexual gain behind it, she's going to give it away to the first man that comes into her life because she's expecting it from you. And you have that right in which you're supposed to give it back to her. So that's been my biggest piece because at one time I was working predominantly with just the young guys. And as of lately, I've moved over and I've started working more closely with the young women as well. Mr. Uh, Tariq Cunningham, let's give our panelists another hand, y'all. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, every other week, talking to y'all, making it happen. Uh, with Brother Ahmed at uh, Honey Ahmed, I want to make sure artists have 
uh, enough time to go. Uh, before I give him the radio, I just want to thank our panelists again. You guys, all, you know, appreciate y'all for real.